yes we are here we're here we're here and thank you very much for noticing our prompt to you it is a peculiar one uh, once again uh, which made you stop thinking question and then realize this was us getting your attention and so what we wanted to discuss with you to make public um, is the necessary need for a few people who listen to this channel to have needed and wanted to have life in prints of a certain man who did certain actions. This may sound peculiar to many, so we will start from the beginning to be able to help you understand the significance of imprint lives. These are not lives that you have physically lived. These are life records, memories that you have downloaded onto your soul essence for the capacity of those lessons in the following life. This is not necessarily something that you need to have downloaded uh, before you're born onto your soul to be ready for that imprint. You can actually have li imprinted lives at certain points of your lifetime to be able to help you and be guided. And this is why we have given many people this imprint very recently. It is a peculiar one. The vehicle finds this bizarre. Uh, but she also trusts that it is purposeful and so we say sit back and relax and listen to us <laughs> explain why and so as the vehicle is relaxing her body uh, you can too for those who are listening because those people that we're talking to who have had this imprint of a certain man's life will know that we're speaking to you and of course, others can listen out of curiosity. But many have asked for and have been granted by their teams imprint lives of the man, the Roman soldier, who led Jesus' path to his crucifixion. It's so morbid, the vehicle says. What is the lesson and purpose here? And so we will guide you through that day for you to be able to understand the role of this Roman soldier. He had a childhood where his father was killed in a war before he even knew his father. He was raised by his mother, an aunt and a grandmother, and he had cousins who he were raised with and he needed to work for his family he had a strong stature and he was quite tall for his age so he was treated as an older child he had authority and he had skill sets of a leadership um, and those who were shorter than him looked up to him uh, for many ways he followed orders, he needed to work, uh, he needed to provide for his extended family. We do not see him marrying. Um, he was diligent to his life role, even though he felt like he would like to settle down. Uh, he had not met the right match. He was too tall. And all of the females that were in his fancy seemed too short. But he was a diligent person in his work. And so he focused on what he was being told. Um, and he wanted to show his, his leaders, his bosses, his influences that he would have been obedient. He did not know much of this man. He had killed many before. 
with his hands. This was different that day. He knew he had to seize that man and he did not assist in the nailing of the hands. He assisted in standing over all to make sure no one tried to resist the actions and events occurring. He was surveying the crowd and showing his authority figure and his stature that people would have to get through to him to stop this. He was good at crowd control and he knew it. But this was a different day. This was a different experience from what he had experienced prior. This man was not begging for his life. And he had peace. There was something unnerving when he caught the eye of the man that was being nailed to the wooden unit. It unnerved him because he was not fighting for his life. He was not trying to fight back. Instead, he had this calm about him, which unsettled the guard, unsettled the soldier. Everyone else was starting to react and get very heated. There was murmurs, but everyone was afraid. People were in shock. People were too afraid to stand up to him. He felt a very heavy presence on his heart. Something he hadn't felt before. He felt energy through his feet. He felt almost uneasy standing. He noticed his palms and his hands were sweating quite profusely. This is not something he's used to before. He was thinking maybe he was coming down with some illness. His guides were pushing him. His guides were pushing him. There was so much internal conflict. His guides were pushing him and pushing him, not to stop what was happening, but to be fully accountable for what was happening. He knew who was following orders. The big energy that was going on and over his body is all of the essences of everyone that was feeling into that life, feeling into that position feeling into that responsibility that you are pushing the crowd away for this event to happen and to not let anyone challenge what was about to unfold. The weight of the world, you could say, suddenly dawned on him. He felt so uneasy, he felt like he could have vomited. He wondered if it was just the exhaustion of the heat that suddenly had taken over from him. He was cons confused and disorientated. The attachment of the body onto the wooden structure was quick and swift. And the walk the walk commenced. The soldier had what would almost feel like an out-of-body experience. He knew he was in his body, but he felt detached from his body as if he was remote viewing it. This is because many were remote viewing his role. And so he was observing his own actions. This was part of what he had to do. 
was a life contract to feel disgust with oneself's actions. Following orders to keep your job and to keep yourself safe is what he would normally tell himself. And he liked doing what he needed to do because he felt like he was part of the, the agenda that he believed in. Pushing people around wasn't really that much fun for him. But he didn't like the ramifications of when people got out of control because it usually meant a lot more people were harmed and hurt. So he wanted to keep order. He needed to keep order because he didn't really like the brutality. He was a man of great stature physically, so no one truly wanted to challenge him because he was so strong and so solid. It was a very surreal experience for him. Nothing he'd ever experienced before. He realized that there was something more significant going on and he couldn't quite understand it. He couldn't quite understand that every time he gazed at the eyes of Jesus, he felt love. And not in a desperate pleading way to save his life. But he felt that he had been forgiven for all of the things he had done that he, even he was not proud of. He knew his moral compass. He loved people. The soldier loved people. He was a gentle giant, you could say. And he always tried to impress peace over brutality. It was the shorter, feistier guards that wanted something to prove. Those were the beasts. Those were the ones that loved the brutality. He had to feel the love of Jesus. And he heard other people mourning and pleading him. But he heard no pleads from Jesus. He looked soulfully into Jesus' eyes many times. It was more than a surreal feeling humbled him. He was so overcome with the physical sensations of so much energy. He was so overwhelmed. Overwhelmed with his feelings, overwhelmed with his physical experiences. It took him off guard so much. happened next was something that he didn't know he was going to do. There was no plans for it and he'd never done it prior. But what he did was plunge his sword into the side of Jesus to make this quickening happen faster. He did not want 
this to drag on. He wanted it to be ended swiftly. This is what he did to show Jesus mercy. To make a quick exit point for him. This was not what Jesus asked for or needed. This was. This was that one man's actions to be able to release the pain that Jesus was experiencing even though he was not showing discomfort at all. It was the pain of the soldier <laughs> and all his sins that were pouring out of him. The soldier wanted that to stop. process of trying to understand and think what he was doing he wanted all end and stop he wanted the noise of the crowd to stop he wanted it to be gone he wanted it to be done with so he shortened the experience he wanted to put an end to the misery of it wasn't until later that day when Jesus appeared to him with his arms out and he was glowing as if he was an angel as if, as if he was a ghost the soldier saw him in his full glory The soldier dropped to his knees and begged for forgiveness. And Jesus came and put his hand on his shoulder and said, You are forgiven, for you know not what you do. Jesus tells him about his father, about Jesus' father and also the soldier's father, that you are loved by all, that you're all brothers and sisters. And the faith that there is a loving father, their heavenly father, watching and supporting and hoping that we will use our free will to stand up, to stand up to those who are impacting those who should be moving forward. The soldier is hysterical and he is so broken. He is so ashamed. And Jesus thanks, thanks him for giving him mercy to help him exit faster. Because it was so unbearable for those watching, it was torturous for them. And so as soon as Jesus was slain, it was then putting them out of their misery. Yes, they had their grief, but yes, they also saw Jesus at different times. He showed himself to many. The reason why this is an imprint for many now is because many live their lives not knowing the truth, not humbling themselves, 
following the leaders and doing their jobs which they think they should be doing and not feeling into their own moral compass you're not living in times where you're killed for your opinions and your beliefs your guides are pushing you to live as you should be some of you think if you have to leave your jobs that's the death of you and it's not that at all some of you have felt pushed around with the lockdowns you can stand up and speak your truth you don't have to keep going you don't have to kill the saviour of humanity. This is still confusing the vehicle, why this is the significance. Jesus' information was from his guides and from his own collective and his own teams because he was able to connect in and all the wisdom and information that he was able to share and bestow upon humanity was given to him by his own guides. We see many people still getting profound wisdom and information. What they do with that information. While well, they're not actively killing the messenger. They are disregarding it. We ask you all, if you saw Jesus, would you want to stand up to that guard? Or would you just step there and watch Jesus be killed? Do you stand up to your truth? Or do you just watch people dismantle it? Not all people have had this imprint recently, only a few. And it's for those people who have been not wanting to respect and honour our messages to them. And so this is their epiphany, this is their trigger. It is a peculiar one. The vehicle needs to listen back to this to understand it. But when you have a life contract to come and be of service and help humanity, and then you've chosen not to step up, We've guided many people to these, these messages and to much other truths. And we've seen many people use their free will to dismiss it. They either add their own ego onto it or something else. It's usually fear-based information that is added onto our own messages. We are not fear-based. We are higher perspective beings that are trying to constantly guide you all to a higher perspective to be in preparation for the shift. And we know many of you who have asked for life contracts to be of service are doing the best you can. But there is a few that is still in denial and resistance and so you're getting certain imprints. We are helping Joanne understand who we are talking about and why she was given this information. 
this is a peculiar one she keeps thinking and telling us. But as we can always say, it is purposeful. It is purposeful. We have other things uh, that we wanted to share. And we feel that this has been enough for one part of information. And we would like you to connect in back with us after you've processed this. <laughs>